Let's set up Minecraft modding for 121 with Fabric. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, and we find ourselves once again starting with a setup a tutorial over here, this time for Fabric 121, and it's going to be a wild freaking ride. And as always, we're going to start at the very beginning. If you have no idea about modding or anything, basically, when it comes to how to make a Minecraft mod or even programming, then this is probably a good place to start. I'll break it down. We'll go through the setup, right, basically, so that you have a, a project that you can then start with and start modding Minecraft with. But first of all, we need to download a couple of things. And you can also see there is a bit of a, a in-depth tutorial in this case, right? It is a little bit involved. There's quite a few steps that we need to go through and each of them have to be taken carefully. So you will have to take a little bit of time here, especially in this first setup tutorial. But when you have that, then it is absolutely amazing and modding is going to be so much fun. 121 is crazy. The first thing you need for modding Minecraft is you need a JDK or Java development kit. I basically always recommend the Eclipse Tamarin right here because that one has never failed me before. I've seen a couple of others that have some weird quirks. That is why I basically suggest this one. In Minecraft 121, we have to take the JDK version 21 over here, the LTS version, make sure that the package type is on JDK, and then you can download it for whatever, well, operating system and architecture you're using. In my case, I am using Windows, and this is exactly the right thing. So here in my case, I'm going to download the MSI. This is just simply an installer, and then once it is downloaded, Literally, you can simply install this onto your PC like any other program. One tiny caveat is very important, and that is when you're right here, make sure that the set or override Java home variable is will be installed on local hard drive. That is extremely important. If we set this, then it's just going to be way easier down the line when we are actually modding Minecraft when we're inside of IntelliJ. So keep that in mind, then just hit next and install onto your PC like any other program. There we go, the JDK is successfully installed and we can move on to IntelliJ IDEA. Now, IntelliJ IDEA is an IDE or Integrated Development Environment. It is basically a fancy text editor allowing us to actually create Java, well, Java programs basically, which modding Minecraft is basically a Java program. Now, this is extremely important. Hopefully you haven't clicked anything yet because it, with the link in the description below, on IntelliJ, you can of course choose Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, and then you have to scroll down to the community version. If I read any comment that, oh, Ultimate costs something, yes, this is why I've specifically said on the JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA download website, scroll down until you find the IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. This one is free and built on open source. This is going to be more than enough that we need. We do not need the Ultimate Edition. That is it, 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 basically all of the different things that the Ultimate Edition gives us is overkill for everything we're trying to do here. So once again, scroll down to the IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, hit download right here, and then you know that it's the right thing that you've downloaded when the name of it is called Ideal C for community in this case, right? So ideal C is the community edition, and then you're good to go. The same thing applies here. Simply install this onto your PC like any other program. And we'll start IntelliJ for the first time in just a second, but the first thing I want to do is I want to appeal a little bit for some Java knowledge. So, of course, M Minecraft Java edition requires some Java knowledge. And Absolutely, we are always happy when new beginners start modding Minecraft. It is always an exciting time because it is really a cool hobby and possibly even, you know, a little bit of a side hustle, all of that. It's all possible. However, one thing is very important and that is if you're actually serious and you're like, you know, I actually really want to get into Minecraft modding, then there is no way around getting into some amount of Java, okay? Now, yes, you'll be able to follow my steps right here to set up the, the project. That's absolutely correct you will be maybe even able to add some items and add a block. But if you're just typing out everything that I write and you're not understanding some of the underlying structures, right, that are below it with when it comes to Java, you're just never going to get very far along. That is why I have this Java introduction over here for Minecraft modding. It's a great playlist. In this case, I'm still using JDK 17 in the playlist right here, but it doesn't matter that much. The differences are minute at best. 
it is a great place to start. You can, of course, also start with any other Java introduction that exists on YouTube. There are so many on YouTube. It is actually crazy. So feel free to, you know, peruse that, of course, and then maybe either come back or do this in, in parallel, right? Learn a little bit of Java, learn a little bit of modding, like sort of at the side, and then you're pretty much going to be good to go. I basically want to make sure that you understand you will need Java if you want to do this in any serious way, shape, or form. So keep that in mind. But if you're already intermediate at Java, well, then you're good to go. Right, and for all of the rest, well, we can move on to the template generator right here, which is going to be the, well, basically a absolutely amazing place where we can get the example mod from. Now, please note, this is extremely, extremely important that you get this right. So please pay attention here. In this instance, we're going to change the name to tutorial mod in this case, and we're going to use a custom ID tutorial mod all one name. The package name is going to be a unique package name, as you can see. Now, in my case, I will choose net.coutenjo.tutorialmod. So that you can see this is net.myname. And then the mod ID of the mod. That's the idea. So if you're called John, you, for example, could say net or com.john.tutorialmod in this case. And then this is extremely important at the bottom over here. I cannot tell this enough extreme importance. You want to turn off split client and common sources and turn on data generation. Make sure it is set up exactly like this. Otherwise, you will have issues following the tutorial series. Data generation turned on, split client and common sources turned off. Please note, this is very important. Download the template and then with this we can proceed. Now I have this template in the folder where I want it in and I'm going to right click drag it and I'm going to extract it to a new folder but I'm of course going to rename this. I'm going to call the folder in this case fabric-tutorial-121.x. We're going to extract this and it's going to open that folder for us and you can see we have everything in here. And now it is time to open IntelliJ for the first time. And what we want is we want to copy the link right here. So we want to copy this. We want to copy this over. And then in IntelliJ, what you will find is you will have a new project button, an open button, and a get from VCS button. You're going to click the open button. A new window will appear again. And you can paste in the location that you've just copied over. And you can see Fabric Tutorial 121.x. I'm going to hit OK, trust this project, and then a new window will appear and things will start happening. Just stay patient. At the bottom left, you can see this little hammer over here with a green dot, dot. Basically, it's going to build, it's going to download a few things and similar type things like that. Just let it run through and you should be good to go. Once it is done, you will either get a build successful or a build failed in however many seconds or sometimes a minute or so. It's going to take some time because it will download some things. So it depends on a lot of different factors. If you did get a build failed, no worries at all. Here are a couple of steps that you can do. At the top left corner, you want to go into project structure. Under the project over here, make sure that the SDK is 21 and the language level is also set to 21. If you make sure that that is the case, then you can go to settings over here, build execution deployment, build tools Gradle. And once again, make sure that the Gradle JVM is set to 21. Whether or not that is with the project SDK, whether or not that is with the Java home over here, the most important thing is just that it is set to JDK 21. And if both of those are the case, then you can go to the little elephant over here, the Gradle, reload all Gradle projects, and then you should be good to go. And then hopefully you'll get a build successful and you can then actually expand this. Now what you'll find is that currently the setup is that it, everything is called net.kaupenjo.tutorialmod and then you got net.kaupenjo.tutorialmod mixin. I want to change this because that is not the setup that I like to have. So to do this, you want to go to the three dots over here to the options, tree appearance, and you want to make sure that both flatten packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. And then you have the exact setup that I have. We can then open the tutorial mod class and we're going to be greeted with a couple of things, but overall nothing too crazy. Personally, I will basically delete the contents of the uninitialized method. I'll remove the comments over here and we will add a public static final string. It's going to be the mod underscore ID equal to a new string tutorial mod right here. And then we can also change this tutorial mod with our mod ID field right here in this case. And there you go. That is the first step that we want to do. The second step we want to do, and that is actually quite important, is in the tutorial mod package, we want to right click new Java class. 
and it's going to be the tutorial mod client class in this case. This will implement the client mod initializer right here. When I hit tab to autocomplete this, the red underlines, we can simply hover over this and click on the implement methods right here. Hit OK. Then we have an uninitialized client method right here, and then the class is done. We then want to go to resources. In the fabric mod JSON file, right here under entry points, we can see we have a main entry point and a fabric data gen entry point, and we simply hit comma and then make a client entry point. So client inside of the quotation marks, a colon, and then a bracket right here, and in those brackets, net or of course, in this case, you, the, the folder structure to your custom class, right? So if you're, once again, if you're John, right? net.john.tutorialmod.tutorialmodclient in this case, right? So you can see we're basically targeting this right here, this class, and that has to be in here. Very important, that has to be set up, otherwise we will have issues down the line. And then we can do a couple of things. We can change a couple of things right here, right? So for example, we can change the description over here. This is a tutorial mod by Kaumjo or YouTube, for example. And the authors are, of course, in this case, Kaumjo. My license is going to be the MIT license. I can also change the icon. It's not necessary, but you can, of course, change it. The contact information, well, that is different as well. We're going to do a kaumjo.net. And then the GitHub repository is not yet set up, but that is going to be... That should be right here under the tutorial by Kaltenjo Fabric Tutorial 121X. There you go. And that is the whole idea here. So those are the changes in the Fabric Mod JSON file. And in theory, this is everything that we need for the setup over here. We simply want the three classes. Two of them, of course, have been added automatically, right? And then the client class, we've just added ourselves. There's actually one more thing before we jump into the game. If we were to open the Mixin package and go into the example Mixin, what I can do is I can control left click on the server right here. And what you'll find is that you have this blue line right here. So when you have this blue line, you simply want to go to the terminal over here and we want to do dot slash gradle w gen sources. So we want to call this particular thing, hit enter. It It is then going to, well, configure and download certain things, basically making sure that it has the sources available. This, once again, this can actually take uh, up to a minute or so, sometimes it may be even a little bit longer. So just be patient, let this run through, and once we're done, there we go, it builds successful. And once that is done, like I said, we can minimize this, go to the choose sources right here, and you can see all of a sudden we have this dash sources jar available. We simply select this, hit OK, and then you can see we're even getting some new comments. Extremely useful, right, because basically having these comments available is going to be absolutely amazing and there's even more positive things basically about this choosing the sources that is why it's so important and then we can go to current file and simply on the minecraft client hit the run button right here and that should start minecraft for the first time if you're actually starting it for the first time with the client over here it might take a couple of seconds longer than it usually does but you know it shouldn't take longer than let's say a minute or two in order for the window to appear. Now, in my case, the window has already appeared, and the narrator is about to, to exactly speak into our into our ears. We're just going to turn that off. There you go. And that's going to be fine. And that is the basic fabric setup done right there. The game is going to start, and there we go. Now, we're not done quite just yet, because this last step basically is a more or less optional, but it is highly recommended, and that is getting a GitHub repository. So GitHub right here is an incredibly reputable site. I highly recommend making an account there and then uploading your mod to github in this case because it will allow you post changes and keep track of changes and if at any time right some like your hard drive for example might fail or something like that then you always have a, a, a version of your mod available online and that is a great idea so in this case simply make a github account and I will link this down below. It's an amazing site. And then what you want to do is inside of IntelliJ, you want to go to version control and then share project on GitHub. And then you can see a share project on GitHub. This is the repository name. Usually you want to make this not private because if you want to share this, let's say if you have some issues, right? You're like, oh, you know, something doesn't work. Then you can share your project from GitHub. And then that basically is going to be way easier. I'm going to be keep it private for the time being. But like I said, when you're doing it, I highly recommend making it public. And then you simply want to hit add account and then log in via GitHub. If you're logged in on your browser, right? You can simply hit authorize in GitHub and then you will automatically be logged in. It is going to be as easy as that. We can then switch back over here and literally just share it, github.com slash 
extremely easy. Then you hit the share button over here. It's going to create that repository and you can see add files for a init initial commit. We're going to add them and it's going to then perform the commit and also push it immediately to GitHub and you can see successfully shared project. I can now click this and it is going to get me to the actual repository over here. So there you go. That is how easy it is. And it's, it's super simple and it's a very, very much highly recommended. If I now change something, what you'll find is that there are going to be changes in color over here. So you can see this is now blue. That means that there's a change right here. So right, if I add a very important comment over here, right, then it turns blue because there's a change in this particular class. If I were to add a new thing, it might also turn into a green name or a red name. So if I, but do note that if you have an error, then it's, it is always going to be a red underline. The name change, right, or rather the color of the name change, that always signifies something with Git, right? So keep that in mind. But if I have this now, what I can simply do is I can go to the commit right here and I can say, hey, the change that we've just made over here, I basically want to add this important comment, right? So there's going to be the change over here. I'm then going to commit. And then at the mast right here, you can see that this little arrow appeared. So I can click this now and I can push this and you can see now I will push it anyway. The problems, there's always going to be warnings when it comes to issues pertaining to modding basically that there's no way around that so we'll just push anyways and then if i were to switch back to github and reload this website what you'll find all of a sudden is that look at this added very important comment there it is that's literally it that is pretty awesome and that's basically the setup for github as well 121 is going to be an absolutely crazy journey over here and it's going to be very interesting indeed next tutorial right here we're going to be talking about custom items so hope to see you there so yeah